are located in the same area. So you might have noticed that unlike in previous grade levels, there is only one strand in Earth and Space unit of grade 10 and that is on Geology. So module number 1 deals with plate tectonics whereas on module number 2 deals with Earth's interior. So you might have noticed if you are going to scan your learner's module that module 1 comprises of uh, 6 activities. Uh, activity 1, find the center. 2, let's mark the boundaries. 3, hit on collision, going separate ways. Uh, 5, slide and shake. 6, is drop it like it's hot spot. So actually, this is very, these are all very interesting uh, activities that you might not try once you're at school. Okay, for module number 2, uh, it comprises of 7 activities. Activity 1, Amazing Waves. 2, Dynamic Earth. Let's fit it. Uh, drifted Supercontinent, continents. Split and separate. How, the, how fast does it go? Push me up on the side. Uh, we are going to take on module number 2 on our next video. So stay tuned and please don't forget to subscribe on my videos. Our area of focus for the day is about plate tectonics. So what is plate tectonics? So actually plate tectonics is a fairly new theory. So 50 years ago, uh, many people would not believe you that the earth underneath the ground moves. So when we talk about plate tectonics, it is a theory explaining the structure of the earth's crust and many associated phenomena as resulting from the interaction of rigid lithospheric plates which moves slowly over the underlying mantle. There are two important principles that you should always remember when dealing with plate tectonics. Principle 1, the plates are driven by calling of earth and principle 2, gravity provides additional force uh, to move plates. Now, the heat energy from earth's interior drives the motion of plates on earth's surface. Simply stated, the conviction moves hot material from the Earth's interior up to the surface to cool, then drags back and then rocks from the surface back into the hotter interior. Uh, to put it simply, heat rises, and as it rises, it begins to cool down, and gravity would eventually suck back the dense material down and just to be pushed up again so that is convection carrot so one great analogy for this one is that convection is like a boiling pot heated soup rises to the surface spreads and begins to cool and then sinks back to the bottom of the pot where it is reheated and rises again this cycle is repeated over and over to generate what scientists call a convection cell or a convective flow there are eight primary plates and several more secondary plates that make up the Earth's landmass. Uh, you, you might be wondering as to why the uh, secondary plates are not stated here. Remember that plate tectonics is a fairly new uh, scientific discovery stimulated by exploration of the ocean basins after World War II. In 1950, most people didn't even agree or believe that the that the continents would move across the Earth's surface. Now, there are eight primary plates from Eurasia Plate, the Australian Plate, Pacific Plate, down to the Antarctica Plate. So, some plates have continents, some don't, but you should always remember that all are in motion. Question, what evidence is there for these plate boundaries? What do you think are the bases for the scientists in order for them to come up with this type of design. How did they know as to what were the locations of these plate boundaries? One of the bases, as you might have guessed, is the seismicity and distribution of earthquakes. There are thousands of small earthquakes every day, strong earthquakes, magnitude 7 occurs once a month, and greater than magnitude 8 occur about once a year. As what the diagram shows, these are the locations of earthquakes throughout the globe. Another quick question, where do you think 
are the deepest earthquakes located? You may use the diagram as a basis for your answer. Is it located on the oceans, at the continents, or in between oceans and continents? You may have noticed that earthquakes coincide with plate boundaries and that the deepest quakes, the blue ones, are in the subduction zone. Meaning, where the two plates meet, that is where the strong or the deep earthquakes occur. Another quick question, where would you expect to see volcanoes? So you may use again the diagram for your answer. So where does most of the volcanoes located? Is it, do you think would it be near the uh, continents in between the plates? Or is it located underneath the ocean or the sea floor? Once again, most of the volcanoes are located where two plates meet. Now, this map shows that the locations of sub-aerial meaning above sea level volcanoes correlate with earthquakes location. To sum it up, there are three important scientific bases for the plate tectonics uh, theory. The first one is the seismicity and distribution of earthquakes, followed by the seismicity and distribution of volcanoes, and lastly, is the seismicity and distribution of mountain range. You might be wondering how fast are the plates moving. Plates move fairly slowly, about 1 to 10 centimeters per year, that is equal to the rate of fingernail growth. Now, the slowest being the African plate, which moves around 2.15 centimeter per year. Fastest being on the microplate Samoa, which moves 9.4 inches a year. Now, it might be too small of a number to be considered, but just think what would happen if it be multiplied by millions of years. What are the tectonic plates? Now, there are two main parts for the tectonic plates, one being the lithosphere. The uh, main characteristic for the lithosphere is it rigid and brittle. It contains crust and upper mantle, the 100 kilometer thick surface of earth, and fractures to produce earthquakes. Now, there is a widespread confusion between the use of the term crust and plates. Remember that the plates of plate tectonics are more correctly, correctly referred to as lithospheric plates, whereas the upper portion of the lithospheric plates is the earth's crust, and that is the outer layer of earth chemically distinct from the under underlying mantle layer. The other part of the tectonic plates is what you call as the asthenosphere, as what is located here. Now, asthenosphere is the hotter upper mantle below the lithospheric plate. It has a characteristic of being able to flow and it is very wrong to call it a liquid. The correct term would be viscoelastic solid. Now, this region of the mantle is not liquid and the plates do not glide over it like a sheet of water. So, you should uh, address this misconception on day one. Now, let's proceed to the types of plate bonds. There are three types of plate boundaries. The first one is what you call as a divergent boundary. Another is the convergent boundary. And the third one is the transform type of plate boundary. Now, you may use the hand signals in order for you to have a clear understanding about this different type of plate boundaries. Now, for the divergent, you can use this diagram, meaning the two hands are moving away from each other. The second one, uh, moving towards each other. And for the transform, is sliding past each other. In divergent boundaries, the main geologic processes or events that would take place is that new crust is being generated as the plates is being pulled apart 
and it occur at spreading ocean ridges such as this one and in continental reefs. Now, the earthquakes produced for divergent boundaries are shallow and small. In convergent boundaries, plates push together. Now, there are two main concepts that you should put always into mind, and that is the denser plate subducts or goes underneath, and when two continental plates crunch together to form high mountains. Now, the resulting geologic events or process that would take place depends on what type of plates converges, such as this one. When two ocean-to-ocean -ocean convergence would take place, the likely scenario is that it would produce earthquakes, formation of volcanic island, arc, trenches, and it may trigger a tsunami. In ocean-to-continental convergence, the geologic events would be earthquakes, formation of volcanic arcs, trenches, and it also may trigger a tsunami. For continental to continental convergence, the geologic events are shallow earthquakes and of course the formation of mountain ranges. So when two oceanic to oceanic plate converge, converges, what it would produce is a group of islands known as the volcanic island arc. Another is that it may also trigger a tsunami and also it would produce a ocean trench. So the ocean trench is located where there is a subduction zone or where the plate subducts such as this one. For oceanic to continental plate convergence, it would produce a group of volcanoes known as the volcanic island arc. It may also trigger a tsunami and would produce an ocean trench on the subduction zone. For this type of plate boundary, subduction ceases to exist. Instead, it is being replaced as what you call as the collision zone, wherein the crust is pushed upward. Now, this process gives rise to the famous Mount Everest in the Himalayas. Now, you might be wondering as to why there is no subduction zone, and that is because both plates are made up of dense material. This type of plate boundary is what you call as the transform boundaries. Now, the lithosphere is neither destroyed or produced as the plates slide horizontally past each other. Now, the uh, famous example of the uh, transform boundaries is the San Andreas Fault Line. So, from convergent, divergent, and transform, the commonality between the three is it always produces earthquakes. Now, that is the end of our topic or discussion for the day. So, you might want to check out these sources for more information on plate tectonics.